I worked a prison in a remote area in southern Iraq, miles from Umm Qasar. At the time I was there, I detained 30k prisoners and an additional 3000 that no one except people working there knew about. They put us in blacked out window commercial buses and drive us an hour away for days at a time to guard the facilities. We were never allowed to speak with anyone in the main prison fob and forbidden to tell anyone about it. We referred to it only as Jurassic Park, one of the black prisons run by contractor medical personnel. The facility itself was a facade of mud brick buildings resembling a small village. The place was complete with villagers, us dressed up in man dresses and a small area for goats on the outskirts. From a distance it looked legit, but up close you could see the bulges from our combat gear underneath the clothing. All of us there were picked for our darker complexion and allowed to grow facial hair. You also had to be military police with TS and PRP, or Yankee white clearance. I couldn't see Umkasar from the facility, so I have no idea where we were. Just that we were in the middle of nowhere. We had to park the gun trucks and buses away from the area and use netting to cover them. The trucks were manned by a PMC, so they looked like a civilian vehicles, beside being armored variations of normal vehicles. Usually, a small fire team would be tasked with security and a turb. The rest of us had to put the clothing on and start a small patrol to relieve the other guards. In late 2007, we were woken up early and recalled to go to the facility three days earlier than our normal rotation. We pitched, got ready and headed out to get to the buses. This time around, we arrived to a lot full of newer up armored Humvees told to STFU and get in. There were already drivers in each truck and off we went. The drivers drove in a tight group, which is unusual for convoy ops. They also didn't talk to us the entire ride. It's pitch black out and all you can see is blackness. But this is the first time we were allowed to see where we were going because the Humvee windows weren't blacked out like the buses. I'm trying to orient myself, but can't see much beside the little red lights of the vehicle in front of mine. The windows are thick armored glass, so it's impossible to see anything in the nighttime desert, with no illumination besides the convoys. We drive for a little over an hour, and you can see a faint glow in the distance. We start to get closer, and it's the facility that's on fire. The lieutenant comes over our comms and relays that anyone not wearing American DCU pattern MOB 4 is to be eliminated via deadly force. None of us were wearing MOB gear. The drivers stopped the vehicles and were told to dismount and rally around a group of LMTVs that are waiting for us. They start calling out SSI numbers and handing out mopping gear that is already our sizes. My WTF is going off hard. NCOs come around and tell us to gear up. We start putting on our mop gear and are abruptly told to stop and strip back down to our regular uniforms and take out our military ID cards, driver license and any other form of photo identification on our person or gear. Little teams of PMC, private military contractors, for example Blackwater, start collecting and searching us. One guy would cut away our name tape, military branch tape and unit patches. Once they finished, another team of them would come up by and try to find anything the first one missed. Lastly, our NCOs did the same thing to see if the first two missed anything. Officers started rallying up our NCOs for the OP order, like operations order, tell them what the plan is, 
and the rest of us are told to rally back up around another set of LMTVs, armor supply trucks like a new Deuce and a half, and start unloading boxes filled with ammo, magazines, and newer NVGs than the ones we already had in our gear. These ones had a rail system that attached in behind our optics so we could wear a gas mask and still shoot and see in the dark. We are told to load as many magazines as possible and put the spares in our three day assault packs. It's a fancy military name for a backpack. We already carried a basic load of 210 rounds and then M9 pistols with 45 rounds in our ammo pouches on our IBAs, individual body armor. We're taken over to another area to zero our weapons at a makeshift little range made of Hasco blast barriers. With my NVGs, I can see that there's a security perimeter around us made up of PMCs. We shoot zero, then rally back up to hear what the plan is. We are to provide personal security for a team of contractors and are to follow any and all directions from contractors unless it's basic combat tactical decisions. We start forming up into squads, 12 people, then break down into fire teams, about four, and designate who will stay with the contractor, who will provide external security, and who will be clearing rooms. We then are briefed via rock drills, literally a map made of rocks and lines in dirt for which squads will assault at what entry point or defend entry points. We are leaving in platoon size, about five squads, and the rest of our normal security detail will provide overwatch with heavy weapons marksmen on the external perimeter once we start to systematically clean the village underlying prison facility. After all that, a team of three contractors wearing those pressurized suits that push air outward when it rips join my fire team. I want to say they had Dupont logos on the suits itself, but I don't recall. We start to move toward our objective. The patrol there goes smoothly and we set up a perimeter and recon the area. Only a few buildings are still smoldering, the fire itself had gone out during all the BS of just gearing up, the majority of the village is intact. There are also bodies strewn about, but with gas masks and only night vision, it's hard to make out if they're insurgents or the guys we normally relieved wearing local clothing. There's a small IR beacon, infrared, flashing, at the base of one of the larger buildings and wants our team to shift to cover or clear that building. Plans are adjusted and the assault begins. It's damn near impossible to move with all mob suit on. That combined with sweat pooling in my mask and low visibility is making something relatively complicated in itself even more difficult. Fire teams make progress to their respective areas. Our building is on the opposite side of the town, so it takes us a minute to get there. We bound and take positions, making it even more tedious as we move. I'm running to take up the next position, and each into the ground landing on top of a body. The face is caved in and the gore gets all over my mask and suit. I notice he is armed with an M4, meaning he is American military. There are shell casings and magazines strewn about his body. I lost footing when my foot hit the shell casings, and like marbles they made me slide and lose balance. The guy behind me bounces up and drags me up by my assault pack, back up to my feet, and we continue. Small arms fire is going off sporadically, but in controlled bursts, meaning that other teams are running into a position, but handling the situation. We arrive and stack up on our building and wait for the last team to get in place and set off two flashbangs to signal for all the building clearing teams to start. 
I'm covering my area of responsibility but can barely see with the sweat stinging my eyes and my inability to wipe it away because of the gas mask. The gunfire has quelled and the flashbangs echo throughout the village to signal the rest of us. I'm first and as lead man in my fire team. I'm having trouble seeing in the darkness and the freaking mask is making it worse. I swing my weapon up and clear my area of responsibility. The rest of the fire team follows, first room clear, so I stack back up on the next door and wait to feel the pat on my back to assault the next room. My eyes are stinging at this point and I really can't see. All I'm hoping is some prick doesn't get on top of me and I get lit up. Feel the slap on my gear, shove open door. I swing right and see a silhouette in the corner. At first, he cowers away from the light coming from my surefire flashlight, then rebounds. I can't see if he has a weapon or not, but he starts to run toward me. Reach to squeeze the trigger, but the rubber from my mop gloves is caught in the trigger guard. Something so simple and quickly taken care of becomes an action long enough to get me killed. Two shots go off and my ears are ringing. Third man in saw the threat and neutralized it. We start to stack on the next door after securing the assailant with the flexi cuffs. Contractor comes in and tells us to stand by. Walks over and starts with the dead body. What the fuck is this guy doing? Dot JPEG. Starts swabbing the mouth with Q-tips and prodding the body with other instruments. I can't really focus on what he's doing as I'm responsible not to get us killed if someone comes through the next door. The other two technicians come in and start consorting with the contractor. The head guy walks over to my fire team leader and tells us to stop clearing immediately and stand by. Contractor gets on his radio and starts relaying a message to his people. Sitting there, waiting, letting whomever is waiting for us to get into position because they know we're there now and every minute wasted is a minute for them to prepare for our entry. I'm getting antsy, thinking about it, and want to keep moving, but can't until I'm told. Contractor's radio goes back off and he mumbles something into it, then addresses my fire team leader. We are told that anyone inside the facility is to be considered hostile and don't try to identify weapons, just shoot. Um, okay, here comes War Crimes Tribunal.mp4. Contractor tells us to continue. Get to door, feel slap. Rush in, room clear. This is the deepest into the building any of us has ever been. There is one last door with a keypad and a badge reader. There's a dead guard in the corner with boils on its boat skin and his clothing is soaked. The contractor follows us in where we secure the body. He repeats the process again, but doesn't call it in again. We wait in the room for a minute and wait for other fire teams to finish their way up their respective entrances. Waiting. Waiting. Then, one of our guys asks the contractor if we are supposed to shoot other American personnel. Hmm, what a dumb question, I think. But then this prick looks at us and says, Yes, anyone in this facility, regardless of affiliation. What the... I can't even believe I'm hearing this. Had it been our rotation instead of those guards, then the higher ups would have just had us off too. With the downtime, I'm starting to connect the dots. Something biological was in this place, and now they are worried it will get out. My heart starts to race. I have blood on me. I'm wearing a mob ensemble from some lowest bit of government contractor probably had made in Puerto Rico I'm starting to shake a little bit my gas mask is starting to pulse on my face from the deep breaths I'm taking 
I'm starting to freak out. How well did my body checks really check this thing to make sure I'm sealed up right? I ask the contractor if I'm safe inside my mob gear. He responds yes, nonchalantly. I yell at him that he has a freaking suit that looks it's out of the movie outbreak and that's easy for him to say. My leader tells me to chill out. I proceeded to chill out, sort of. Radio goes back off, and other teams are ready. Contractor walks up to the door, takes out restricted area badge, swipes it, then enters his pin. Door hisses loudly and retracts backwards with a hydraulic whir. Enter next room, sterile. One way glass to my right. Little corridor, not really a room. Shove muzzle into the one-way glass to break it in case someone is going to light me up from the other side. Muzzle makes contact and the solid glass doesn't even wobble. The shock hurts my wrist. Continue toward end of corridor. Another keypad. Contractor does his thing. We assault into a long hallway with rooms on either side. Freaking room cleaning nightmare. Contractor assures us all these doors are secure and walks ahead of us to a specific door. I can hear movement and voices inside the rooms. Realize they are where the detainees are kept in cells. Contractor talks to leader. Contractor wants us to force cell extract the prisoner. We don't have any riot gear to do this have to do it anyway. Stack up on door and he inputs a code to open it. Door unlocks. Rush in. My first step in, I slip and I'm shoved forward by my teammate for the extraction. I knocked out briefly. Wake up back outside cell. I'm covered in blood and teammate is wiping blood off my face shield. Contractor is hovering over me and asks me to check the seal on my mask to make sure it didn't tear. Seal is fine. Doesn't even ask if I'm alright. Walks away. Talks to sergeant. Looks inside cell. Covered in blood and vomit. Detainee dead in the corner over here. Contractor address one of the techs. Tells them to stay out of the cell. And that he was hoping we'd find him here and wouldn't have to go another block of the facility. Restart assault and get to end of cell block. Another keypad. Inputs code and we go in. The room is round with a guard shack in the center of the circle room. Cells align the entire room with another keypad door at the end. Some of the cells are unsecure with doors open. Vomit, blood, feces line the walls and floor. Gate checks is one way glass, can't see inside. Hear beeping from inside. American steps out. None of us have the balls to kill him. I recognize him. One of the guards I normally relieve, but he is down here. He starts to babble. He doesn't recognize who we are behind the protective suits. Sees Contractor. Shuts up immediately. Contractor is waiting for us to react. I'm waiting for us to react. No one reacts. I lower my muzzle and look to Sergeant for guidance. He just nods his head. No. Contractor asks to speak with Sergeant and two other techs take opportunity to ask guard what happened tell him my name he remembers me from doing changeover released it four days ago five of those came up and told us there was a riot going on that the guards inside were being overwhelmed said we didn't need suits like them and that it was a precaution they lied we need to get out of here man Looking into his eyes, notice they're bloodshot. His skin is yellow, gums pale, and he keeps rubbing his stomach. One of my guys starts talking to him. 
He turns around to face him. The back of his pants are covered in black feces, matting and hardening. He passes a long, winded gas, but doesn't even break stride talking to the other guys. Pauses, looks at seating abruptly, snaps his head back and forward, and vomits all over the guy he was speaking with. He starts to talk again like nothing happened. Arguing starts to get louder behind me between contractor and sergeant. Start to step back a little bit. Feces pants guy started telling vomit guard to take off his mask so he can see his face. Vomit guard is freaking out trying to clean his face shield while crouched on one knee. Feces pants started stepping closer to his crouched body and reaching for his mask. What is going on? What is he doing? Start yelling at him to back up and leave the other guard alone. Ignores me. Throws up on guard again. Still reaching for his mask. And they start to scuffle. Feces Pants is screaming for him to take off his mask so he can see his face. I run up and hit Feces Pants with the butt of my weapon. He rolls off, gets to his knees and continues to and vomit himself screaming at vomit guard to take off his mask. I start wrestling with feces pants and screaming for sergeant to grab flexi cuffs. Screams are muffled because of mask. I'm on top of his chest but he is still grabbing at my mask and trying to rip it off. He's biting the rubber face shield and screaming at me in between. Start freaking out. Rubber overboat kicks him in the temple. Black blood starts coming from his ears. He starts struggling more, but Sergeant saw us fighting and ran over. Now he's flipping him over and gets the cuffs on him. He keeps squirming around, see the cuffs digging into his skin. Vomit guard runs up and we drag feces pants into an open cell and slide him in and shut the door. We and our gear are all covered in vomit feces and blood. Contractor says nothing to us but stares. We all nod in acknowledgement. Feces pants is still screaming, tumbling around the cell. Contractor has all of us come to him and the tax says bluntly, if you want to get out of here, you need to listen to us. We have a ways to go and I want to stay alive then walk off to the next keypad door. Sergeant yells for us to stack up. Stack up, fear slap, assault room. Five people mulling around in center and look surprised when we enter. I fire, and so does everyone else. It's a security station, monitors, intercom system, etc. Secure bodies with flexi cuffs. Sergeant walks to camera monitor and consults me. Says we can bypass a lot of stuff if contractor tells us where we are going. Agree. Call over contractor. He agrees, looks over the monitors, points to facility clinic and says we need to go there so they can do their job and we can all leave. Facility is much bigger than expected. Contractor tells us first rooms we passed are just holding areas for new prisoners to be sorted. Emergency exit map in security room. Start to plan assault. Place is built like a giant square with several hallways connecting rooms all the way to the center that makes up the largest cell block and aid station. Run rock drills using miscellaneous office supplies. Get confident we know somewhat where we are going. Start to assault the facility again. Get lucky through most of it. The traces of running gunfights are evident throughout. Bloated corpses in some of the security substations. And we are all out of flexicuffs. Begin using sidearms to ensure they will not pose a threat. Get to three tier block. Decide we will just assault through as quickly as possible to the other side and try not to avoid getting bogged down. Open door and start big line. There is a security station in the center. Running toward it 
to get past and GTFO out of the place. Door swings open, and prisoner with M4 steps and starts firing at us. America steps out next, taking up position of cover and starts firing. Hit prisoner, standing out in the open. Keep up suppressing fire on guard while my teammate runs down the opposite side to flank him. Tags guard. We all rush up to clear the security station. It's empty. Guard is still alive. Tells us they saw what we did to the other guard station and the prisoners and guards that are still alive are armed and waiting for us. Sergeant shoots him. There are only four of us that have shaky understanding of the facility's layout. It makes me nervous. No time to talk and run across cell block to other door to next door. Continue throughout several more rooms, careful at each substation, but haven't run into anyone else. Make it to clinic, secure it, then set up defensive position near entrance to protect contractors while they did whatever they were doing. They finish up and come out with a flexi-cuffed prisoner. I'm getting more anxiety over the situation. Now we have to tote around four people while fighting a force that knows what the layout of the structure. Prisoner isn't wearing protective clothing, but he doesn't look sick either. Start to understand why they need him. Begin assault through building. Have to cover new territory as if the shortest point to one of the exits is an entrance that leads to another facility where we can link up with a fire team from our original assault force on the surface. Start running through rooms, trying to be cautious but trying to GTFO as quickly as possible. Run into what looks like an ambush. The three who set it up are barricaded behind random furniture and bodies litter the kill zone. Start running through the bodies, trying to keep weapon level with barricades just to point where I'm running on top of the bodies. Reach barricade. All dead. Still have weapons. Looks like they succumbed to whatever everyone is sick with. Vomit, feces, black blood. Something new with these guys. They looked like their abdomens tore open from the pressure of the fluids inside of them. The organs are black. Some of the fluid is a deep yellow. Keep running, getting tired, getting complacent, overheating, dehydrating. Nothing we can do but keep running. Sergeant is lagging behind us. We cover more ground and he stops and takes off his mask and throws up. I look at the contractor and he just nods his head. His skin is yellowing, aggressive looking boils on his cheeks has the same deep red tint to his eyes, pulls M9, kills himself before we can even say anything. No time. Start running forward again, hoping to make it to that door. We have three more rooms to cover. Contractor calls me back and tells me to stop. I know where this is going, so I put the M4 on him and tell him I killed both of us before I let him waltz out without me and my guys. Tells me not to worry and says we need to deviate slightly to decontamination rooms. Too tired to care and he leads the way. Get two rooms and they spray the gore off the suits, sitting, waiting for, for remnants of the original prisoners and guard force to kill me while I just stand there like an asshole while this thing sprays a bunch of stuff on me. Nothing happens. And we all rendezvous in what he called a clean room to wait on my other three guys to get done with their decon process. Start to put gear back on and not paying attention. Gunshots ring out in rapid succession. Contract has killed the other two techs and has gone on me. Tells me he can get me out of here, but I need to protect him when we get to the surface. Agree to it. He shuts off the decon and locks my guys inside to die. 
has me put on one of the tech suits instead of my original gear. It takes me not to the door we thought to get to, but to an elevator. Nothing seems real. Go on autopilot and follow him. He knows the layout more than he let on in the beginning. Get to the elevator and takes us back to the original mock up village that hid all this. Rendezvous with my original security element, hoping they don't recognize me through the face mask. Halo lands and takes us across border to Ali Al Salam Air Base in Kuwait. I'm smuggled out of the country and back into the United States. Contractor kept his word, and I've kept mine. If I gave you my real name, it would say I died in a mortar attack in late 2007 in southern Iraq, outside of Umkasar. I'll leave you with this. A clue. J376. Thank you for staying till the end of this video. What do you think about today's story? Let me know in the comments. Please think about subscribing and giving the video a thumb up as well. Thank you. And I hope to see you soon.